In this video, we will go through the steps that it takes to properly set up your chassis, installing the cards in the chassis for use. Uh, on the table here, we have a WT90. This is the larger of the two chassis that VeroWave sells. Cards go into a WT20 or a WT90 in identical ways. Now, what you'll notice here is the WT90 has open slots. Here we have a management slot. Slot 1, 2, and 3 are all open and available. And then slots 4 through 9 have blank panels in them uh, as shipped from the factory. So in this particular configuration, if a customer buys uh, three cards, maybe two wireless cards and an Ethernet card plus the management blade, this is what the chassis would look like shipped to them. It will have blank slots in those slots that there are no cards for yet and, um, and then open space for the cards that, that were purchased. Obviously, you can remove these. There are screws at the top and the bottom, and then these blank panels come off, and another card can be slid in to allow you to expand your operation as you go. When you receive your WT90 or your WT20, you will also receive a package with, within the, the um, cardboard box. In this package are a couple of important items. One is the installation guide, so if you, all of the information that I'm going over in this video is also included in this installation guide for your own review. Specifications are here as well. Second thing that's very important is there will be a static strap that is uh, provided. You may have your own ESD static strap, that's fine, but the point is that before you handle any of the cards, any of the wave blades themselves, to put them into the chassis, you need to take precaution to prevent electrostatic discharge to either the interior of the chassis or the cards. So I'm going to do that right here. We'll open up this package and typically what we recommend is take a static strap. It can be again one that we have provided or one that you already have. Make it electrically connect to the metal rail to which the cards are attached. All right, so you want to make sure you're not connecting it um, to a painted surface, you're connecting it to an unpainted surface so that you get a good electrical connection. Then the other end, you pull tight around your wrist so that you're making um, physical contact between the static strap and your skin. Now, the last thing that you'll find in the bag when it comes to installation is a screwdriver. Uh, you can use any screwdriver, but one is supplied, has a Phillips head on it, and that's what you're going to use to, to secure the cards into place. Now let's open up one of the first cards here. You'll notice that they're packed with foam packing. All right, as we remove that, what we'll find is the card laying in foam packing. We typically handle the cards by the, by the front of their, uh, by their front panel. But, but essentially what you'll find on the card once we take it out of the bag is the card is robust, but many components are not protected. So this is a typical management blade, and as you can see, you can get access to the components, and what you want to do is to take precautions to not bump them against anything or um, uh, discharge electrostatic energy to those components. So we tend to handle them by the front panel. So if we now move these things out of the way, inserting a card means you're basically going to put the card in where it slides into a bottom and a top rail um, that match. So what you want to do is position the management blade into the first slot that's also labeled management. And then you also make sure that the top is fit into its corresponding slot. You want to make sure that you get both the bottom and the top in their slots so the card is not too far one way or the other. And then the card should slide gently and straight into the chassis. When you get to the place where the card is near seated, you can grab a hold of the tabs on the top and the bottom. These are the black tabs. And they have teeth that engage with the top rail and the bottom rail. And by pressing these towards one another, down on the top and up on the bottom, you will drive the card the rest of the way into its seat. And you'll feel it uh, firmly go into that seat. 
Then you take the screwdriver and you will see a Phillips screw at the top of the, of the upper latch. You'll want to screw that in. Again, it does not have to be very tight. You just want to make it snug so that the card seats. And the same thing is true on the underneath side. There's a screw on the bottom and you'll screw that in. And once it seats, you've gone far enough. There's a, on the back panel of every one of these cards is a gigabit ethernet interface plus power supply and other signals. And to make firm, reliable electrical contact between each card and the back plane, they need to be screwed in. Uh, so now I won't go through putting the other cards in, but every other card mounts exactly in the same way. So when you're done and ready to, to use the chassis, you will have either a blank panel or a card properly screwed in and seated in every slot of your chassis, whether it be a WT-20 or a WT-90.